Back from Seattle where it's Death Valley out there. So again, right here, Adam Jones, you can see how shallow, but he goes back as well as anybody. And and then it's hard to tell until the game starts. Obviously, you can get a little bit of a read during batting practice, which whether the ball is carried, but that ball didn't seem like it took off like we saw some of the balls in the last uh, homestand. Only 77 degrees. Do you imagine that on July 10? I mean, it is magnificent. Pitch is taken up high by Hill. He's going to the All Star game. Aaron Hill will be at second base. He's got a three game hit streak coming into this series. He is fifth in home runs, batting at 298 on the season. Hill will pop that one up. Weeders coming back has run. And he's got it. Boy, here's a chance yeah. for Perkin to have a good quick inning. Yeah, and he gets a high ball hitter out as we take a look and a very unconventional two seamer. Usually you hold it with the seams. Here's your four seamer. So again, across the seams on both of those two pitches. There's the change up, a circle change up. You can see the four finger and the thumb. It's a little uh, curve ball, which he doesn't throw a whole lot. And then the slider. So those are his secondary pitches. Here's one up oh, one of the hot hitters we were yeah. talking about standing in. Lind has got a five game hit streak going. He is the designated hitter for the ball club and uh, big numbers 309 19 homers 59 RBIs on the season. He's sixth in RBIs seventh in hits and has more ex extra base hits than anyone else in the American League. So Lind is one of those in this lineup. He's had an extraordinary first half of the season. Forty five extra base hits. Leading Morneau to Shara, Carlos Pena, and Evan Longoria. Yeah, he's their version of Nick Marcakis. And he's actually having a better year than Nick, at least up to this point. I mean, hitting well against righties and lefties. That's the big difference. You know, last year he only hit two home runs all year against lefties. This year, Adam has uh, settled down. He's already got four, four of the 19, hitting well over 300. And had a reach for that one. Shortstop is Curtis. First play off the DL. And a great inning for Burkett as he retires the side in order. The Orioles line up when we come back to Camden Yards. Take a look at our PNC scouting report on the 23 year old Brett DeCecil out of the University of Maryland grad. Well, he's a five time loser, five home runs in a game up against the Red Sox. And for him, we talked about Burke and not getting a lot of run support. A little bit different story as he gets it almost, well, actually over six and a half runs a game. So there are the numbers. You can see the high ERA, awfully a lot of hits for inning pitch. One thing he doesn't do is walk anybody. Can't afford to do it, giving up 55 hits and 39 innings pitch. And the pitching coach said, you know, he's got all the pitches. He's one of those rappers where he kind of the, the, the wrist goes quickly behind his back. So again, for him, he's going to have to stay down in the down in the strike zone to be effective tonight. 
both of these pitchers very high numbers by opponents against them. Uh, for Brett Cecil, the opponents hitting 344 off him. And the pitch will be taken inside by Brian Roberts. Comes in second in doubles in the league and still battling a sinus infection, for which I have great empathy. He's had it for a couple of weeks now and it just won't go away. And it has really sapped the strength out of him, taking some energy away. That's why he set a couple on the road trip. Fastball is going to be in there for a strike and it'll go to one and one. The flu bug is really wrapped around Major League Baseball, and you can understand why with the time spent in hotels and planes and clubhouses together. Once it gets in the environment, it goes from player to player. That is going to miss down low, two and one to Roberts. Yeah, Dad, and just notice uh, when Brett Cecil, when the arm comes back, it's not one of those normal swings. It'll kind of hang behind him, so a lot of times difficult to get it back in the proper. And watch it right up. Out there, it's way behind him, and he's all over the place with it to start the, the ball game. A three-ball, one-strike count. Brian, 276 off the lefties, 273 right-handers. Just watch again. He wraps. So again, it's a lot difficult to get the arm up and get it into position. So you, you're trying to find that release point. At least from this year, it's been a little bit more difficult for him. Here's and that is a strike. He came along in a hurry. He's only had 51 minor league games. He went 10 and 10. He came through three different levels last year to uh, to make it this season to the majors. He was 8 and 5 with a 2.8 DRA combined last year. Strikeout pitcher, almost 10 strikeouts per nine innings pitched. Roberts will foul it off. Stays at three and two. Yeah, that's what Brad Arnsberg, the Toronto pitching coach, was talking about. Only 217 innings in the minor league. So again. He's only 23. He was drafted in 2007 and already in the big league. So he's taken some gigantic steps. Holds the saves record at Maryland, where he played college baseball. 3 2 delivery on the way again. Brian Roberts down to third. Tuck backhander rolling up. Big guy throws and got him. Nice play by Scott Rowland. Well, I'll tell you, he's always been one of those unbelievable third basements when he's healthy. Well, again, an awfully, you know, we talk about the 25 game hitting streak. He's certainly not uh, just thinking about his uh, bat. Adam Jones is going to go to the All Star game, and he is one excited young man. It'll be his first All Star game. He heads out to St. Louis. And uh, he said before the game, he can't wait. You see the season numbers 12 homers, 47 RBIs, and red hot when it counted for those looking at those to be selected for the All Star game. So Adam will. Make his way out, and uh, it'll be one obviously he'll never forget. And most likely we'll get playing time and maybe a good deal of it. Keep in mind there are no DHs playing in St. Louis. Pitchers will be hitting, so there'll be some changes. There'll be double switches and pitchers coming out for pinch hitters, and it's a little different for an All Star game when you don't have that DH. 1 0 delivery, Jones will take it inside, and the count goes to 2 0. Adam sitting 273 off left handers, 328 off right handers for Adam Jones. That is one of the best numbers in the American League in that department against right handers, the sixth best average in the league. And nine of the 12 home runs against right handers. Of course, a lot more at bats than against the lefties. Jammed him, that's a good pitch, and two and one. Cecil left handers 295 off him right handers 374 and he has given up eight home runs in just 39 innings pitch including those five Jim mentioned against Boston 2 one delivery another one swung out and missed same pitch and uh, the pitcher thought that was strike three hello how many times have we seen that this year with Position players, hitters, and pitchers who do not know the count or the outs. Oh, we saw an entire Red Sox team run off the field the last homestand here. I've seen that more this year than ever. Brian Butterfield is asking, what's the count here? He's talking to the home plate umpire, Jerry Meals. So actually, obviously, the Brett Cecil thought that a strike had been, or a ball had been called a strike, or a pitch had been called a strike. Yeah. And then right now, Brian Butterfield coming out, the interim manager. And of course, our condolences go out to Cito Gaston. His sister Maddie Clark passed away down in San Antonio, so he is expected to be back on Sunday. Yep, he's going to miss a couple of ball games. He kept it very quiet around the club while it was while she was struggling. 
He really didn't tell them until it was time for him to go. Two ball, two strike count on Jones. Get the count taken care of. And Jones will fight that one off at the plate. Adam battling. He has had a red hot bat. It has been a very good month of uh, July to kick it off. 345. No home runs. But a 345 batting average. The only multi homer player so far in July is Luke Scott. He's had three home runs this month. Nobody else more than one. 2 2 delivery on the way. Jones will take it inside. Trying to get inside his kitchen there and a three ball, two strikeout. Yeah, that's been the real difference in the Orioles. Uh, Offense. They lead the American League and Major League Baseball with runners in scoring position, hitting over 300, but the power numbers down. I and mean, Luke Scott hadn't hit those home runs. Adam only hit one in the month of June. Marquez is the same. 3 2 delivery, and he got him. Yeah, I don't even know what that pitch is. I just think it's a fastball. Maybe it has got slider down there, but it looks to me that he threw him a couple in this count. Got his moving in, and you know, there's the break. And it looks to me that Cecil's going to be all over the place. He's, not, he's going to be a difficult guy in the sense that you can't really look in the middle of the plate because the ball is moving all over the place. So if he's able to get that movement, even if he's pitching from behind, which is he's done to both of the first two hitters, you can be successful that way. Nick Kegas with two down and nobody on. Outfield straight away on Nick against the lefty, and the fastball is taken up high for ball one. Next 255 off lefties 313 off right handers. This has been a very tough month of July. Nick only has six hits and 31 at bats a 194 average so far this month. 1 0 pitch on the way trying to bust him inside missed with it 2 and 0. The Brett Cecil continues to work behind the hitters here in the first inning. A lot of pitchers have been used by this Toronto team. He's one of five to make his major league debut this year. They too have gone through a number of starters. Roy Holiday being their constant. 2 0 swung on and fouled off. Will they trade him? It's going to take a lot. When I shook his hand today. I said, you know, I just never know how long you're going to be here. And he kind of laughed. He doesn't well, know either. No. Well, he'll what, be 33 next year. He's in the last year next year of his contract. Pay doesn't really make a whole lot of difference, but he would make any team he goes to a lot better. Brewers have said publicly they are going to talk to the Jays about him. Well, they're talking, you know, what, three, four quality players? I don't know if you'll get that. I mean, it has happened in the past, especially if you have another year in your contract. He would be effective anywhere because he can flat out pitch. And then there is Roy Halliday. Got beat yesterday by David Price in the Tampa Bay team, three to two. That ball popped up third base, rolling back, and he's gone. Thought he was close to the stands, but really wasn't. Had plenty of room. So a one-two-three inning. A little Friday night start the weekend out. Some shrimp, crab meat on the way. Hang in there.
worth of American Classic scratch off tickets from the Maryland Lottery for every Oriole home run hit tonight. You can have a chance to. You can enter by logging in at massinsports.com. Owings Mills, where the great financial show came from for decades. Here's Scott Rowland. Rowland is on a tear. A 25 game hit streak. He has upped his average to third best in the American League at 330. 26 doubles, six home runs. And Rowland's hitting like that. Jones, though, is going to catch this one. Rowland retired, one away. Let's go to Rambert. Well, Gary, back in the first inning, Jason Birkin had a one-two count on Adam Lynn and got him to, to uh, ground into shortstop for the out, and that's exactly what Rick Kranitz wants to see from Birkin. Lately, Orioles pitchers have been giving up a lot of two-out hits, or excuse me, two-strike hits, and right now they lead the American League in that. They've given up 316 two-strike hits, so if Jason Birkin is able to get batters when he has them up against the wall, he'll be able to go deep into the game, Gary. All right, and that fly ball is going to be handled easily as Wells is retired on a fly ball to Jones and a lot of first ball early in the count hitting going on Birkins throwing strikes he is and of course you know this is a very aggressive hitting team they, they lead the the American League in doubles with 190 lead it in hits with well over 100 what 844 coming into the game you, know, you had Wells who just made the out he's on a nine game hitting streak you talked about Rollins 25 Lynn Hitting well. This is about the only guy that's really been struggling. What three for his last 37? Lyle Overbay has uh, not had a hit in his last 10. As Jim said, three for his last 37. And uh, Overbay, seeing his average drop down to 249 now. And then Overbay will take the pitch outside. One ball, one strike count. But if you're a veteran, and that's what Lyle is, he came over from Milwaukee, you know you're going to play just about every day. So you always want to bat away from starting a hot streak. And he will do that. Yeah, and he's a good hitter. Yeah. Owen one is going to be nubbed off the bat. You may not be able to convince him of that at the moment. He's got to convince himself. Yeah. Once he does that, he'll be fine. Because <laughs> he certainly has the talent. Birkin, just nine pitches in the first inning. Two quick outs here in the second against the team he made his major league debut against and got a 7-2 to two win. In a ball game he left when the Orioles were leading three to two. He gave up two runs, seven hits over five, and won that ball game back on May 26. But he has not won since. Seven games without a win and only two no decisions. Delivery on the way, floated outside and missed with it. And the count goes full, three and two. Yeah, he threw him three straight changeups trying to get him out, and now they back into an even count. But the only time they really scored a run was in his last start. Now to Anaheim had a four nothing lead and then couldn't go deep in the game and he ends up walking him. Mm. one and two batter lost 16 walks in uh, 42 innings for Birkin and with two down that will keep the second inning alive and bring Rios an ever dangerous power here to the plate. Yeah, And that, that's a great point because. You know, at least if you're well prepared, that over Bay, and you don't take him lightly, but you know he's struggling. So the last thing you want to do is walk him because this is Alex Rio has always been able to hit the fastball. That's what Jason Birkin does best. Yes, he has a curveball slider and changeup. And lately hadn't been getting them over. So he's been primarily, and maybe that's why we had some quick outs, is the scattering part probably on Jason for Toronto is not getting his other stuff over. Look for the fastball early on. And it's been good enough to get hitters out though. Rios on a check swing takes the pitch outside. Alex Rios here in this ballpark a 298 career hitter. He has had five home runs here at Camden Yards. One of the better numbers along with Scudero and Roland and Overbay. The ball hit well here at Camden Yards. Runner at first. That one drilled the left center. This is going to be a long run. Jones back back back. Cannot get it. It will save a run for the moment. It is a ground rule double and Overbay who would have easily scored if that ball's in the yard will have to stop at third and Rios has got a two bagger. Yeah so a lot of times it's not the walks it's what happens after the walks 21st double of the year. We talked about our PNC scouting report stayed down. Adam Jones can't run it down. And that ball very fortunately for the Orioles unfortunately for 
the Jays it bounces into the left center field bullpen. Now David DeLucci DeLucci is getting the start in left field. He has not had a hit with Toronto since being called up. He's old for 13. He had his contract picked up from Triple A Las Vegas on July 3. Had 16 games with them. Hit 317. DeLucci will take it outside and a one ball one strike count. David DeLucci is a veteran player both minors and major leagues. He's been around. Yeah, he started with the Orioles. In fact his major league debut right in this ballpark against David Cohn. A couple of strikeouts. DeLucci to second base. Brian Roberts gets the good hop. DeLucci retired and Birkin works his way around it. No runs, one hit, no errors. Two are left in scoring position. No score, Jays and Orioles. Book your next trip at Southwest.com and by PNC. PNC leading the way. With Jim Palmer and Amber Theo Harris, I'm Gary Thorne. Great to have you on board on this Friday night as the Orioles kick off the three game set. Aubrey Huff will lead it off for the O's here in the second inning. Reimold and Scott will be coming up. will take the first pitch for a strike. On the road, 179 coming off that trip, so we'd like to get things going again offensively. And we'll have to wait. Yeah, he had a similar series as when he went to the West Coast before, where he hit some balls pretty well, and they just got to the warning track. I guess on that last trip when they went to Seattle and Oakland, he said it probably hit about five home runs. And what did Buck say? Well, you weren't playing. You know, there would have been home runs here, but if Buck Martinez said you weren't playing here, that's there's a little more room to, to pitch in, especially in, in Seattle. Fouls that one off. He has good numbers against the Jays so far this season. These teams have split the first six games played. Aubrey with a 360 average. He's gone nine for 25 with a home run and five RBIs. Against Jay's pitching. These teams have swept one another in their own yards. Here's a 1 2 delivery. Aubrey Huff reaching and didn't get it. So Huff goes, a strikeout victim. Two of those for Brett Cecil in the ballgame. Nolan Reimold coming up, continuing a rookie season where he's going to get serious consideration for rookie of the year if he continues to put the numbers up in the second half that he has prior to the All Star break. First half performances by Oriole rookies, some of the best. Reimold right up there with Eddie Murray and uh, Cal Jr. in the games played. You see the number of comparisons and the Nolan Reimold among those rookie seasons for those Hall of Famers has put up competitive numbers. Yeah, he, he came and, and did it in a hurry. And you could see also he has not played as many games as both Eddie and Cal. And again, a tough road trip. They, he got pitched to, even though he did have a game where he went three for four. All those hits came in one ball game. 
left hander just misses inside with that one ball one strike count. And because of that off day yesterday the Orioles got home about what two o'clock on Thursday morning from Seattle today working with Terry Crowley and trying to maybe iron some things out. There's another slider. It's hard to really tell if it's just a cut fastball again because he wraps his arm but the ball's got great life Threw a good slider to Huff to strike him out good slider to Adam Jones for another strikeout. He really rides in on these right handed hitters one two delivery on the way and Reimold will foul that one back. He's hitting 279 off the lefties and you see after an 0 1 count we talk about these numbers all the time so I thought we'd give you something to look at in the American League after an 0 1 count the average is 235. The Orioles a little better than that at 243. And that's why that first pitch strike matters so much that we talk about. I mean, you just, it matters. You get oh, yeah. more outs. I remember when Rick Peterson was a pitching coach out in Oakland. He tried to convince his guys, you know, the difference between 0 and 1 and 1 and 0 is usually about 100 and some points, 120 points. There's another good breaking ball of some sort. Boy, that is. And again, another slider. Pitch, yeah, and, and he's locating it really well. Three strikeouts, two in the inning. It's the same pitch. A little Ron Guidry action right here. That's the way Guidry would pitch. Enough fastballs to keep you honest on the outside corner and then bury that slider down and in. Of course, Carlton did it. Lowlich did it. Some of the great pitchers of all time, lefties. So Luke Scott comes up with two down and nobody on. Luke hitting 346 in July with three home runs, leading the Orioles. He's tied for first in the American League in RBIs in July. And the fewest at bats with home runs at home for the Orioles. Luke Scott's also right there in that category. Way behind on a fastball right there. You take a look at at bats required to get home runs in Orioles history. You see how prolific Luke Scott has been in being able to, to get those. With Frank Robinson a couple of seasons at the top, then Luke right behind him, Jeff Mando behind him. 0 2 delivery. Boy, that was close. Ooh, ah, one ball, two strike count. Brett Cecil was headed to the dugout again. And maybe with just cause. That was a pretty good pitch. Yeah, slider that just stayed up, at least for what Jerry Meals, the home plate umpire, thought. Thanks no second count. chance and yeah. nothing, nothing ball game. He'll be trying to wrap one right here. One two delivery on the way and he bloops it and a base hit into right. So Scott's got a 10 game hit streak continued with that two out single and the Orioles have their first base runner comes in the second inning. Well amazing year for Luke Scott. Uh, he's, he's learned to hit lefties. I don't know if he like, maybe that's a, a rephrase that. He's a managed to hit lefties. I don't know if he ever forgot, but he was hurt last year, this year healthy. You can see Melvin's numbers. Boy, the extra hits, extra bases down, home runs. And hit one and approaching 200 at bats. They hit a couple of balls hard on the road trip. Gap power. Melvin would love to find the long ball just to feel better about it. Right now, though, anything that will get the runner around. The Orioles are 15 and 16 against left handed starters on the season. One below 500. And the two out hits gets more to the plate. And we saw that with the walk. It, you know, last getting the two out walk to Overbay, who was three for 37, got Rios up. And you know, if Perkin didn't get lucky, they would have got on the board. That double bouncing over the wall instead of short hopping the wall. Morris had the numbers down against the lefties at 241 average. Not typical for Melvin Moore against left handers. He's 273 off righties. And Cecil's pitch will miss down low. And he falls behind on Moore at two balls and one strike. Red Cecil, only 23 years old, 623 ERA, and all those homers that he has surrendered, especially to the right handers. Six out of eight throw over to first base. Jim mentioned how he'd had that five home run ball game. After that ball game, he got sent down to the minors, as you might expect, and uh, had to do some work there trying to get things straightened out. He pitched against Boston on May 20, five home run game, four and two thirds innings. Didn't get back to the majors until a month later. 2 1 delivery. Mora takes it, and it's inside. 
And a three ball one strike count at Melvin Mora. So here is where you may get a pitch where you can hit it. And drive it. Look for something out over the plate. I think for the problem when you're struggling power wise sometimes you expand the strike zone but if you look in his own. And of course Melvin had that great second half last year. 3 1 delivery to him and walked him. So after getting two strikeouts, a single and a walk have put two on. First walk given up by Brent Cecil and Matt Wieters will get the RBI chance. Matt has had a good July so far. First eight games, four for 28 with one multi hit game. The last 21. Hitting 315 with seven multi hit ball games. It kind of mirrors what he did down at Triple A Morphic, his first exposure down there at Triple A after having a great year at Double A Brewery last year. And it, yeah, yeah, it really is. And you know, Terry Crowley, uh, his hitting instructor said, well, guys have better command. They maybe throw a little bit harder. They have more of a repertoire. Things aren't as predictable when you get to the big leagues, so there is a period of adjustment. Plus, you got to come up here and learn every. You got to learn your pitchers, the, the other pitchers. Good stop made by Chavez. It's a major job to come to the big leagues as a as a catcher. It's not like you're playing the outfield and you don't have to make decisions, put down fingers, and just hit. A lot more to think about. Oh yeah. As a switch hitter, Matt's 233 right-handed. One of his three home runs hit this side. Much better average so far the other way at 293. 2 0 count though. He's got a hitter's count runners at first and second, two down. And Wieters will take the pitch down low. And this is this is what happens to Brett Cecil with that problem with command and location. You can get four, five batters, a couple yeah. innings where he looks unhittable, and then all of a sudden it all disappears. Here, two strikeouts and a single and a walk. Scott off second, Mora off first. 3 0 pitch, Wieters takes it, not even close, and the bases are loaded. Well, welcome back, says Iris Torres. Meeting at the mound, and as Torres, who just came off the DL today, will get an opportunity with the bases loaded in his first at bat. Yeah, natural right-handed hitter. He is a switch hitter, hitting much, much better from this side of of the plate. Only had what six at bats, I think, two for six. There you go. Yeah. Now David Hernandez is going to be right back up here after the All-Star break. They didn't want to use him in the pen. They wanted to keep him on his starting rotation. They can do that by sending him down. He'll be back for the New York series after the break. Yeah. Probably Jim, you're going to take a couple here. There haven't been many strikes. Yeah, that ball not even close. And again, Brad Armsburg said, I mean, this is a young pitcher that mechanics go awry, and then it doesn't matter how good your stuff is because he's, he's shown us the slider. He's thrown 94. But at the moment, and right at the moment, and you can see, I mean, it looks like he's about 18. Just turned 23, I think, on July 2nd. But right here, just trying to slow everything down and try to get that release point. And when you lose it, and there's a tendency. I mean, when I came up, I was a little bit more over the, the top. But what happens is you lose the release point, and then you figure, well, I got to be perfect, and then you have no chance at all. Right now, he needs to throw the ball for the middle of the plate because it's not going to end up there. If it was, he wouldn't be walking people. And just trust his natural stuff. And if he gets ahead in the count, then use that slider, which has been very effective. And all he needs is one out to get out of the <laughs> inning. To get Scott at third, Mora at second with the walk, and Wieters with the walk after Scott had the single. But there are two down. As Torres hole for one with the bases loaded this year has a 1 0 count. And that fastball is in there for a strike. I asked Cesar about the fact he went down in that rehab. He went two for six, two runs, two rehab games at double A. He said, Yeah, but I also got hit by a pitch. So I'm really ready. I don't think he thought he'd be coming up for the bases loaded the first time. 1 1. And one ball, two strike count. So the other thing that so often happens, pitching coach, manager comes out to talk to the pitcher, and he looks like somebody else as soon as the guy leaves and starts throwing strikes. Or by the time you get back to the bench, the ball's over the left center field wall. That's, That's happened on a few occasions. 
One ball, two strike count. And Sturris will just try and make contract. Outfield has moved in very shallow on him. And in the dirt, another good stop. And Chavez is something to keep an eye on tonight. This guy has a cannon. And this is Tony Pena reincarnated. He will throw to any base at any time, any count, any out situation. And if you're not alert, he'll gun you down. He'll, he's got a great arm. So you got to be careful if you're on base with guys sneaking in behind you because Chavez will will throw it around. Two two delivery is Torres on the chopper and Forrest at second. Scooter out to Hill and that will do it. No runs, one hit, no errors. Orioles lead the bases loaded. We completed two, no score. Who has been suspended for two games and fined an undisclosed amount for the action in Seattle, where he got thrown out and then apparently went to the dugout, went behind a police officer, continued to be involved in the game, which under the rules, after you're ejected, you cannot be involved. So that's apparently why he got the suspension. And Dave with the GM. Well, you can't tell him you're involved, which is what happened. Yes. You can always be involved. Yeah, we always Phone are. calls and uh, right. cell phones, yeah. Carrier pigeons, all oh, kinds God. of different ways of. Raul Chavez, the catcher. Chavez batting ninth in the order. Getting the start behind the plate because of the arm that he's got. And that one's going to be drilled to second. Brian Roberts thought about jumping, but didn't have to. And there's one away here in the third inning. This weekend is your last chance to see the Orioles at Camden Yards before the All-Star break. Tickets for tomorrow night's 7:05 game and Sunday afternoon's 1:35 game against the Blue Jays start as low as nine dollars. So gather up your family and friends and spend your weekend at Oriole Park. 888-848-BIRD or go to Orioles.com. And there is the All-Star of the Orioles. Great chance to come out. And See him play in center field, get some at bats here, and then he'll be heading out to St. Louis. Well, yeah, stars. he's going to have a great time. He's genuinely excited about it. I mean, he was bubbling today. As the uh, Orioles have only Adam Jones, Toronto will uh, send a couple as the Jays All Stars, as you would expect. Roy Holiday will be making the trip there along with. Their number two hitter, Aaron Hill. They'll both be going to St. Louis. And as always, the managers try and get everybody into those ball games. Breaking ball taken inside. Marco Scudero back at the top of the order, flying to center his first time up. Yeah, Jason Birkin trying to establish that changeup. He's probably throwing more than I've seen him throw in recent games. Still trying to locate the strike zone. Now you're back into a fastball count. And a little late on it and fouled it off for a two ball, two strike count on Scudero. Brian Butterfield thinks Scudero is the most underrated defensive player in the American League. 
He says he gets very little credit for the work he does in the field. And he says he gets the balls. He's got a fine arm, great range, really likes the way he plays at shortstop. 2 2 delivery on the way, and that'll be taken outside on a slider. It looked like 3 and 2. Well, there you go. The Orioles again having to use a lot of rookies, Berkinson and Birkin and Hernandez that we talked about. Uh, chopper to Roberts, perfectly positioned. Jason gets back in the cap, didn't want to go three and one, but makes a perfect pitch. And fair to say, I think Dave Tremblay did hold his conference before the ball game, and he said, look, it is an important start for Jason Birkin. We're not going to say it's do or die. You, nobody puts that kind of pressure on their pitchers. But you can't have won one game and then gone seven without another win without there being some concern especially with an ERA of 6.25. Yeah I think that's the problem. Yes they haven't gotten them a lot of runs 2.9 so it's very difficult to win but you do want to pitch better. So what they're looking for Rick Granite's talking about it is that OK you need to stay down in the strike zone. They have they did some balls hard you have to use all your pitches that he's done that tonight. There's a perfect hitters count to a guy that's going to the all star game. You know, Hill, I mean, one of the best high ball hitters, hitting close to 320 home runs, close to 60 RBIs. And then he's looking fastball, and he throws him a perfect slider, and he doesn't pick it up. So that tells you the slider was a pretty good slider. Good spin, late spin. Second in the league in hits, and he will foul that one off. No easy player to get out. No, oh, and then he comes in on his fist. So there you go. Hill right behind Ichiro. Ichiro's going, Hill's going, Crawford's going. Robinson Cano is not going. Michael Young is going to the All Star game. A lot of new names. Almost half of the players at the All Star game are there for the first time. Foul back. 33 players now on each roster. And I counted today 24. I think of the 66 now with the uh, final player's name are going for the first time. Half of the staff for the National League pitchers, it's the first time they've been there. Uh, one ball, two strike delivery to Aaron Hill. Check swing and they look at first. Yes. Ooh. Oh, oh. Nick DeMuro says he oh, went around and Hill does not agree. <laughs> the first strikeout for Birkin, and that will end the inning. Did he go? As Judge Duty or whatever they are on TV would say, you will be the jury. And is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your next trip at Southwest.com and by Corona and Corona Light, official sponsors of the timeout. Relax responsibly. Great day to be eating ice cream in the Inner Harbor. Here's Brian Roberts. Ah, where'd you come up with that? Because that's we, what I did today. Oh, okay. <laughs> now I know where you. Did you walk around? It was banana nut. Really? Yeah. How appropriate. It was. Very appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> Hello? Were Hello? You, were you eating gloating? Oh, one hit in the air to left field. Just missed on that one, Brian Roberts. 
And Bellucci's out there to haul it in. Roberts retired, went away. Was I eating what? Gloating while you were doing, showing, showing people. Gloating? Yeah. Why would I be gloating eating ice cream? I don't know, because you felt so good about yourself. Well, I did, but I wouldn't gloat. I'd just okay. sit there and smile and hope the seagulls so don't add a topping that I wouldn't like. <laughs> <laughs> Adam uh, Jones. Strikeout victim is first time up. I'll look for you tomorrow. Well, we'll be here tomorrow. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's a strike called on the outside corner. Well, how about uh, I'll look for you in Chicago? Will you be in Chicago? I'll be in Chicago. Okay, I'll look yeah. for you in Chicago. I'll be in St. Louis. You going to the All Star game? No. No. Okay. Gift show. Then I won't see you there. Ah, time to make a little coin, eh? No. No. Follow my wife around. Oh. You? Oh, that's right. Look at her to make a little. Look coin. attentive, yes. <laughs> <laughs> a fine accompaniment you are, my dad. <laughs> one ball, one strike count. And they don't give you gifts at the gift show, by the way. No? No, you go there to buy things. Oh, that's going to be caught again. Defensive positioning over Bay <laughs> right there. Yeah, that happened uh, with Russell Brandy. Adam Jones up in Seattle hit a BB into right field, but it was way laid by the first baseman. Watch this approach right here. That's a pretty good pitch. Hardest ball hit so far off of Brett Cecil. And just an out. Little smile down there at first base by Overbank. Miles says, I'm not hitting well, but I can pick him down at first base. Here is Nick Marquegas. Ground ball towards the middle. Does he got enough legs? Yes, it does. Under the glove of Hill. And Marquegas is on with a seeing eye single. And another two out hit for the Orioles. That's their second hit off Brett Cecil. Well, there's baseball. Jones hits one on the nose right here. Just a kind of an innocent ground ball as it bounds it away. The all-star second baseman Hill can't quite get to it. And Nick on base with a base hit. Two out for right. Well, the Orioles try to get something going again. They did it in the second inning. Single two walks. Couldn't get a run. Now Marikakis on with a two-out single. Aubrey Huff struck out his first time up. And the breaking ball is taken down low, ball one. Brett Cecil got Aubrey to chase the pitch after getting ahead of him. Here falls behind. 1 and 0. Oh. Over Bay will hold the bag at first, giving Huff a little extra room between first and second. That'll grab your attention. Well, they have it down as a changeup, and he used that to get out of last inning. That ball gets away a little bit. I tell you, difficult to hit off a youngster with good stuff and all over the place, and throwing enough strikes to get out of harm's way. You don't want to dig in too no, much. No, yeah, I mean he's not a comfortable guy. And he goes back outside and misses with it, and uh, falls behind three and zero. Oh. This is well, similar yeah. to what happened after he got two outs in the last. You inning. think he's going to be swinging here? We saw Russell Brandon. Off of Brad Bergeson, second uh, hitter the first night the Orioles were in, homer to left center field. So he might have the green light. 3 0 delivery on the way, strike in the inside corner, pretty good pitch. Of course, it's not coming from Trembley because he's suspended and he can't help. Can't be he involved. can't manage. He can't be involved. He's upstairs, no communications. They've shut all telephones off in the GM's box. So Dave cannot call down. Incommunicado. Incommunicado. That's it. Here's the 3 1 delivery. Jammed him a bit. Third or short. Short stop. So Scudero has got it. No runs, one hit, no errors. A pitching duel for the first three innings of this ball game. Only three hits total and no runs.
Cabot Woodstain's art performance is legendary. And July 10, this date, 2001, earning his second All-Star Game MVP award, hitting a home run at the years of 40 in a ball game where he got to move from short to third. In Seattle. Yeah. That was there. Off of Chan Ho Park. Then he, had the, he had, then he had the back toss. Tommy DeSorto was coaching third base. Yep. Tumbled backwards. What Brown. a moment that was. That oh. was. I mean, again, the script. You yeah. couldn't have written it that way and believed it could happen. Cal was involved in a lot of good scripts. Yes, he, he was. 1-0 delivery on a way and a strike on the outside corner. Adam Lynn. A tremendous year in every number up from last season. Look at the home runs, 9 to 19. That ball in the air to center. It's been a busy day for the All Stars. Oh. Almost underran that one. Well, they have hit a lot of balls hard. And Adams running a couple of them down. Couldn't get to the one off the, the bat of Alex Rios. But again, the one thing I, about Jason Burke, and I, I still think he's going to have to work on his command, but he is not afraid of contact. Even in the one thing he does, and I think what the Orioles like, I know Dave Tremblay, well, we won't talk about him, he's suspended, but Rick Kranitz, a pitching coach, likes the fact that even with runners in scoring position 260, he does battle you. But he will get better as he gets more experience. Because this is double A, back to double A. What, he went 2 and 0 in five games at triple A, and then right to the big leagues? That's a very quick ascension. It's amazing how these two pitchers have so much in common. Both making a quick, quick ascension, both not having many games in the minors, very little AAA, both struggling. ERA is almost identical coming into this game, both trying to keep their starting position in the rotation going. Roland pops that one up behind second base as Torres is out. Roland's retired. He's 0 for 2 in the ballgame, two down here in the fourth inning. So there, there you are go, two yeah. Youngsters trying to earn a living. Yeah, the big difference right here 2.9 and Six and a half. That does make a big difference. It gives you a little bit of comfort. So for Jason, and we mentioned only in his last start in Anaheim, and the Orioles actually, with two four nothing leads, didn't win either of those games. But tonight better. I think the breaking ball is better. And then right there, we talked about Scott Rowland. He pops up a changeup. So using the complementary pitches more effective. Lee. Vernon Wells. Wells with a nine game hit streak. He flying out to center. Adam Jones has four putouts in center field so far in the ball game. And this is a fly ball hitting team. This is a team that hits line drives fly balls. That one popped up third base. Melvin Mora. And another strong inning. As Bregan sets the side down in order. That's the third time he's done that in four innings. The rapid rewind. Yeah, pretty exciting uh, inning for Brett Cecil as he strikes out and gives up a base hit, couple of walks, and then when he needs an out, 
Cesar Esteros back off the disabled list, able to get the big out to uh, keep the Orioles off the scoreboard. AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. Ground ball, first ball. Rolling up, running throw. He's got him. Primold is retired. He's old for two. Yeah, jammed a couple of times. Of course, Roland won seven gold gloves over the course of his career. That will bring Luke Scott up. Luke delivered a single, started that second inning, and they loaded the bases and could not get a run in. Among the DHs, Luke continues to lead, second in batting average, first in home runs, and first in RBIs for designated hitters in the American League. Left hander will come inside to him for a ball. Orioles trying to take advantage of the big numbers they put up here at home as they are 24 and 20 at home, 14 and 27 on the road. 1 0 delivery is taken outside largely uh, due to the offense. They have the largest differential in batting average in the league, home and road. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. at home, 237 on the road. Don't you think it's pretty simple? If you score over five runs at home and give up uh, 4.3, you're going to win some games. And if you score four and give up close to six on the road, you're not going to win games. And that's been the story. So you can change that. You can change it like you. I mean, this is certainly not a, a, a team that is. It's not the uh, 1985 Cardinals where you have a big ballpark, Jack Clark, and a bunch of guys that can fly. I mean, they should be able to score runs everywhere. Yeah. And the same, the pitching should be better on the road, and that's going to be the goal for the second half. Not to mention the next three ball games till you get there. And he got that one. A little too much of the plate as Brent Cecil and Scott hits his second hit, so he's two for two. This one comes with one down. Yeah, nobody is swinging the bat on this team better than Luke Scott. Not only for power, you mentioned the three home runs in the month of July, and then again, to me, he's the strongest guy on this team. And this year, he has shown tremendous bat speed, the ability to hit the ball left center over. Now, let's see if the Orioles getting somebody on with less than two outs can turn it into a run inning. Orioles 0 3 0, the Jays 0 1 0. Four left on by the O's and one two by the Blue Jays so far. Melvin Mora cranks that one down the right field side and that will be a foul ball. Melvin drew a walk. The only one surrendered by Brett Cecil who has three strikeouts. Jason Burke in a walk and a strikeout so far for the Orioles started. Boy, Melvin liked to get in that second half groove last year. Shoulder problems and hit 376, drove in 56 runs in 48 games. And that was probably the most productive hitter in the American League the second half of the year. Oh, and delivery to him. The fastball will be taken up high. And a one ball, one strike count. Melvin knows one of the questions for the Orioles as the growth continues is what's going to happen at the corners. In the short term as well as the long term, who's going to play third? Who's going to play first? And uh, for next year, starting next season, will it be Melvin Moore? Yeah, and the same across the diamond. Uh, Aubrey Huff will be a free agent unless the Orioles resign him. And Melvin would like to put some numbers up that say it's me. Yep. Well, certainly going to. He would assume get the opportunity. I mean, you have. We've seen Wigginton play third. Salazar could play third if he's on the roster. I mean, the David Hernandez move is yes, you get him to the minor leagues and he'll get his starts, but it's also about not having to make a decision on PA and and Salazar, especially with the three lefties coming up. You'd like to have a Oscar on the bench to help you if you need to pinch it. One-one delivery on the way, shattered back, long run for Hill. He gets it, running throw, and gets the out. Hill had played more, more towards second base. Scott goes down to second, and there are two down. Yeah, good a moving, long way yeah. to go. Well, good moving fastball. And again, your call's right. If if you see the bat shatter, otherwise this ball might have gotten into right field. But again, it, it appears to me, and just and we've only been up here what four innings now. It seems like this infield may be a little bit slower than when the Orioles went off to the West Coast. Plus, he didn't hit it particularly well. Now, a two-out RBI being looked for. 
as Matt Weider stands in with a runner on at second base. And with two down, of course, Scott will be off on contact. Weeders drew a walk his first time up and was stranded. Well, Wells can throw Rios' outstanding arm in right. Lynn, an average in left. Or Del, Del, Delucci, excuse me. Weeders starting to pull the numbers up in these situations too with runners in scoring position. He's four for 23 now. That's just 174. But he got off the snide on the last couple of weeks in that department. 1 0 delivery to him. Had to yank that one and did foul as he went upstairs. One ball, one strike on Matt. Well, the one thing about Brett Cecil, at least he's used all his pitches. Maybe a little erratic. And then if you saw Matt Wieters hit his first home run from this side of the plate, it was a bomb right center field at Anna. About 430 to right center. See Scott jumping around. He, he realized nobody was going to move over the bag on him. So he said, all right, I'll walk a little further. Wieters fouls it back into the screen and a one ball, two strike count. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason for the middle infielders to, to cut down the lead. Because he doesn't have that much speed. He's going to be running anyway on contact. They'd rather try to field their positions. That's something Dave Tremblay was talking about before the game today. He said, you know the things that are done right fundamentally baseball wise are rarely noted. So but when there are mistakes made obviously everybody <laughs> sees them because they stand out. What Luke Scott's doing is one of those fundamentally right things. Nobody's covering the bag. So don't just go off two steps. Go off four or five or six till somebody challenges you and you give yourself a better chance uh, to get home. Now stepping off and Cecil wants to talk with Chavez. Yeah, it'll make a I mean, we see it all the time in Camden Yards, a one hop line drive into right field. I don't think he can throw him out because he's going to get a tremendous jump. Sure, it'll make it a lot tougher. Yep. Cecil gets together with Chavez on what he wants to throw to Weeders with two down and a one two count. what it was. Four strikeouts, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on. It remains scoreless. For Toronto. Also on Sunday, Brad Bergeson will go in place of Jeremy Guthrie. He will be against Mark Zepsinski. Now, Guthrie has been scratched from Sunday's start because he's still feeling those flu like symptoms. He's battling a virus, and so until he gets healthy, they pulled him uh, out of the rotation to get healthy over the All Star break. Gary? All right, so there's the change, and there's a base hit as Lyle Overbay delivers a single leading off the fifth inning. So the leadoff man is on for the first time in the ball game for either team. Yeah, that's one of these uh, these games when you get into a nothing nothing ball game. Can you get the first guy out? So you walked him last time. There's another change up. 
because he threw him four the last time and that led to the walk and Brian Roberts great effort on our X month trying to get the ball before it gets into the outfield. Well, we'll see how Brian Butterfield, the acting manager, wants to play this now. Here's Rios who doubled his first time up. Rios will take it inside for a ball. So another one of the numbers we talk about. You get a leadoff man on. How often do you score? The American League average, 42%. The Orioles just a little below that, but really right there at the average of 40%. Now that's the average. And that's actually down from it used to be around 49 to 50 percent every year. Yep. And then you get the first guy out because at least it used to go down to 15 percent. Probably even a bit lower now. So it's a big big difference. Here's the one one delivery. Merkin wanted the call didn't get it. And, and while some people may, yeah, might just think that's a stat. And you may tell a, a, a pitcher about LK okay, strike one because it's sometimes 120 130 points in the batting average versus ball one. How about that number. Oh I need to get the first guy out. Well yeah you do because it's about a 30 percent difference or maybe greater. Make depending on, and depending at what point in the lineup you are. Is it the second time around. Who's up. Can they move the ball. Do you have a guy that can steal. You know Halliday loses yesterday when Crawford gets on and leaves the American League in stolen bases. He steals. They throw it into center field. Runner third with two. You know with one out in the first inning. And they end up scoring a run. Rios waiting on it. Chops it foul. Speaking of the numbers, a great story in the New York Times today. For those of you who like statistics in baseball, a whole new dimension is going to be opened up with a brand new camera vision that's going to follow every movement of every player and every ball that's thrown during a base every baseball game at the major league level. It's going to measure those things we call the unmeasurables. How many balls do shortstops get to? For given teams and how many don't they and how many leads are taken of how many feet I mean it's going to have every darn thing that happens in the course of the game. Well aren't they doing so they've been doing that in basketball and I think it's one of the scouting mechanisms to see what guys do when the ball's not in their hands how well they move how well the defensive people. Yep. So often you can analyze a basketball game and now baseball. Same way. Center field again Jones back turn oh. 360 and not going to get it. Misplayed. Runner had to hold up at second base over base, so he's going to have to stop at third. Adam Jones got turned the wrong way. That's a catchable ball for him, but once he had to turn his back to the plate and pick the ball up again, he couldn't do it. Yeah, if you're going to play shallow, and you could see him right in that uh, little bit of sod that's been replaced here, and you turn the wrong way, I and mean, that's why only the really special outfielders can go back as well as they can come in. So Birkin in trouble here two in scoring position and nobody out Rios has delivered yet another double as he's two for two in the ball game and now has twenty two doubles on a ball club that leads the majors in doubles and here's David DeLucci DeLucci looking for his first hit since coming up as he has played in five games now and is 0 for 14. Well, if he hits the same ball to the right side, he'll get a run in and a run over. And that's really what I would believe Toronto would like. Obviously, you'd like the bonus where he gets a base hit. But that's good baseball. That's situational hitting. And that's why it's so difficult to pitch when you get runners at second and third. If they play the game right, ground ball to the right side, another one, you're going to have to either play your infield in, you get yourself a 2 nothing lead. DeLucci, a 258 major league hitter, will take the pitch away. DeLucci's played now in 1,000. And 81 Major League Baseball games. He is 35 years old and he's been all over the place in the minors and majors. Diamondbacks, Yankees, Texas, Philadelphia in the last two years at Cleveland. And he's going to get the RBI. Brian Roberts will have to make the play over to first. RBI for DeLucci. So he's got an RBI before he gets a hit. And a 1 0 lead for Toronto over base scores. Rios goes to third. And this reminder the Orioles are hosting a series of baseball camps designed for boys and girls 7 to 16 a four day instructional program with player appearances by a current and former Oriole. You'll get autographs photo opportunities daily lunch professional instruction. You can go to Orioles dot com click on fan forum to register and find out more. Now the infield is going to be drawn in. Raul Chavez takes the pitch for a strike he lined out to second his first time up. Yeah, and how big is the misplay by Adam Jones? It's not an error, but 
Boy, it really set up this inning. And now you put a lot of pressure on a young pitcher. Just the way the game is played. We, we saw Seattle when the Orioles went ahead on Tuesday night. Seattle had to play their infield in. Orioles took advantage of it. Almost hit yeah. Rios at third that time. That's why you're in foul territory. Still hurt, but it's not a fair ball. Not the batter gets a hit, but is out. And there you go. Ooh. Skip to the loo. Chavez four for 23 with runners in scoring position, making his 22nd start behind the plate. 0 2 count on him. And uh, got one up high and away, trying to get him to go after it. He did not. And a one ball, two strike count. Ronald Chavez. 1 0 lead on the RBI by DeLucci. Chavez now with a chance. We'll see whether Rios will go on contact on the ground ball. Here's the one-two delivery. Stays at one and two. Yeah, hug a little slider and he jerks it foul. Of course, the Orioles saw him play briefly in Baltimore in 2006 after playing the almost the entire year down to double A Bowie. And he came in last year with the, the Pirates when he was playing for Pittsburgh. Thought time with Montreal, Seattle, Houston. He's been around, as you mentioned. It's batting 260 in the starts, the uh, previous 22 starts that he's had. Told you he's got the great arm. He's thrown out 43% of base deals, 12 for 27. Very high number. And the guy on the bench, their, he's their regular catcher. He is uh, leading all American League catchers in RBIs. And that's Rod uh, Barajas. Chavez, he's got a base hit. So Rios will score. Chavez on his way to second. Reimold will get it to the cutoff man and another double. Three doubles in the ball game for Toronto and a two nothing lead. Yeah, you hang sliders. That's the one he hit foul. Watch this one just kind of hovered around. So it's up in the zone. We talked about PNC scouting report. Stay down. Melvin can't catch it. He's anticipating something. Down and away, you can see that's why he's that far off the line. If he knew he was going to hang a slider, he'd, I don't think you ever go about saying, "Okay, I'm going to hang a slider to this guy." Play, play the line. That's just not the way it works. 193 doubles now for Toronto. They had uh, seven more than Boston coming into the ball game. The RBI picked up by Chavez. There's still only one out here in the fifth inning. Scooter out, grounded out, flied out. Top of the order. And that one in the air to right. Marquez, runner tags. Here's the throw. Got a chance. Melvin Moore, the tag, not in time. Now Chavez will move up on the fly ball out by Scudero. Well, this is why Nick Marquez leads the American League in assists. Look at this arm. And on the money. Chavez not particularly fast. That's why they had a chance. He just got in. Ooh, uh, watch that ankle. Nick Marquez with eight assists in the outfield, but Chavez beats that one. Now here's Hill. He has popped out and struck out. And the slider up high. Now this is where Birkin has had all kinds of troubles as far as part of, of a ball game. He has been pulled prior to completing five innings in six of his last seven starts. So he's trying to get through this fifth inning and get deeper into a ball game. Weeders wasn't sure where it went. Not far enough away for Chavez to think about coming. Well, pitch count not an issue. You know, the leadoff base hit. Adam Jones turns the wrong way. Second and third. And there are the numbers you were talking about when you get into the. So they have them on the board at 67 pitches here. But his stuff. He's just breaking stuff much crisper than that. Even though he did hang the slider to Chavez. 2 0 delivery on the way. Popped it up. Silo shot. Melvin Moore coming. Should call for it and does. And makes the catch. But two runs in on three hits with a runner left on, and the Jays take a 2 0 lead.
two nothing lead. It'll be as Torres coming up for the Orioles as they trail Roberts and Jones to follow. As Torres came up with the bases loaded and hit into a fielder's choice in the second inning. Four hits for the Jays, three for the O's as Brett Cecil, 23 year old left hander, delivers inside for a ball. This Toronto team has lost three in a row, swept by Tampa Bay. They've lost 11 of their last 14. This is the first time this year they've fallen below 500. They come in with a 43 and 44 record. And it has really been tough, and it's all about the pitching. Their offense, they've scored 34 runs in the last seven games, but they've given up 39. Yeah, Breaking I ran their numbers. Yes, yeah, I ran their numbers, and you know they scored a lot of run early, early on, and, and did very well in April and May. And pitching has always been consistent. June, the runs went down. Pitching stayed about the same. This month, the ERA. A little bit over five runs a game. Is another good pitch. Yep, got him on the ground. Hill. As Torres retired, went away in the bottom of the fifth. You know, the, the one thing, and I don't know if Brett Cecil's trying to do this on purpose, but he's moved just about everybody's feet by that throwing that fastball down and in, and you know, guys are skipping rope, and then it's it's he's an uncomfortable guy to hit. Good stuff all over the place, but at the end of the day, he's made some real good pitches through at least four and a third innings. Effectively wild. Yeah. Because he's only walked one. And if you watch the game and didn't keep a count on the free passes, you'd swear he must have walked three or four already. And he hasn't. Brian Roberts. Strike taken and he's flied out. Our league leaderboard presented by Firestone, a tradition of innovation. Brian Roberts on top in doubles. Marlon Bird, Dustin Pedroia, Michael Young. That one fouled back. Some question about whether Pedroia is going to be able to go to the All Star game. The man to be a replacement for the Red Sox second baseman. His wife pregnant, close to giving birth, and uh, some concern apparently that nobody's obviously talking about private matter, but they're going to wait till the last minute to see whether he's going to be able to go. Here's the 0 2 delivery, a breaking ball to short. Scudero. Two down. Well, Brett Cecil's got some sink going here in the ground balls here in the fifth. Two guys with ERAs over six runs a game, and you have a two-nothing ball game, which could be nothing, nothing. A little better defense from the Orioles. On the part of this man, Adam Jones. Well, you know, I noticed when we went to Anaheim, and he is very good friends with Tory Hunter, who has won the last eight gold gloves in center field. Tory plays a little bit deeper than Adam did. And when we were in Anaheim, Adam was playing deeper. You do that when you're because, watching your hero. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, Earl Weaver's theory was right on it, with the exceptions. If you have a guy like Paul Blair, who was the best I ever saw going to the wall, because he could just get back and always seem to know where it is, it is just easier to come in. And if balls go over your head, they're usually extra base hits or home runs. And what Torrey Hunter does, he plays a little bit deeper, he gets to the balls, he's able to go over the wall. And give up the single, maybe. Yeah, exactly. I think, well, you obviously do that with two outs. Yeah, there is. See the youngest average age for the outfielders, the Arizona Diamondbacks, the Reds, and then the Orioles at 25 with San Diego and Pittsburgh. Teams building. That pitch is taken down low for a ball. And the count goes to two and one on Jones. Nolan Reimold there, the left fielder. Yeah, he's 25. Nick is 25. And Adam will be 24 in August. Two ball, one strike count. Brett Cecil. That one's going to be line left center field. Wells will hustle to hold him to a single and will. As Jones makes the turn, one for three. Ball gets away, but backed up by the pitcher. So again, the Orioles get a hit with two down. That's the same thing they did in the second inning, same thing they did in the third. Yeah, this ball hit it very, very hard. Yeah, Terry Crowley, the Orioles hitting instructor, said, you know what, still a lot to learn for Adam Jones. And the reason that Crow was saying, I mean, very, hard, very good student, very hard worker. But again, more, about maybe not even a thousand at bats in the big leagues. 
Now Nick Marquegas Orioles down by two. Each team has four hits in the ball game. Marquegas a single and he has popped out. And the pitch is up high for a ball to Nick. And this is one of the problems we mentioned earlier on in the ball game. The differential with these two teams offensively. The Orioles had four hits, but they're all singles. Toronto's got four hits, but three of them are doubles. Thus, two runs for Toronto. 1 0 delivery. Marquegas takes it on the outside corner. Didn't like it. 1 1 turns to Jerry Meals to have a word with him. Yeah, a couple of games ago, they wrote an article on uh, ESPN.com and talking about Nick had hit a home, one home run in 168 at bats. So again, you're one swing away from getting getting one and getting the Orioles right back in this game. But that's why he he likes strikes to be strikes and not balls. But that's the way it is when you hit. Some umpires just had bigger strike zone than others. He has been the extra hit man along with Luke Scott. Uh, Nick Marquegas. 28 of his 63 hits have been four extra bases. He's added a single in this game. Here's the no there isn't. If you look at total bases that number really shows up between these two teams as Toronto's second in the league in total bases second only to the Yankees. The Orioles are ninth in total bases. That's what we're talking about with the extra base hits where that shows up. One ball one strike count. Okay, I guess breaking ball outside and the count will go to two and one. Brett Cecil has had problems each time an Orioles gotten on with two away. He's been able to work around it. But it's had to work very hard. You see the second time through the numbers down then the third time through it really jumps. This is the third time through. Jones off first. 2 1 Marquegas. Left center. Scooter of the shortstop. And he's got it. No runs, one hit, no errors, and a base runner left on as Brett Cecil continued to work his way out of jams here. Two nothing. Cecil's been even better. And again, in a close game, sometimes it's a play here or there. Ball over Adam Jones' head. Gallucci will drive in one. Chavez another. And there are the numbers for the two starters. Birkin at 25, Cecil at 23, and so far, Brett Cecil, Cecil has outpitched Jason Birkin. Birkin goes back to work here in the sixth inning. After giving up the two runs on three hits, RBIs to Lucci and Raul Chavez, and he's got Lynn Rowland and Wells. Five game hit streak for Lynn, who has grounded out and flied out. And he takes the pitch for a strike. One and one. Orioles have now stranded six. Three left on by the Jays. Wow. 
on one. Chase went upstairs, foul tipped it into the mid one and two. Birkin bringing some heat on that one. Yeah, sneaky 93. I want to congratulate Shane Victorino of the Phillies and Brandon Inge of the Tigers, the final two All Stars named by the fans in the balloting among the five players chosen by the managers that were voted on. And they are both first time All Stars. Two ball, two strike count on Lynn. And late on it, fouls it away. It'll stay at two and two. So 93 and pitch count in the low 70s. So very economical tonight. And the manager watching Birkins putting on a show. Trying to show why he should remain in the rotation. Off speed pitch just got enough. Birkin can't believe it. That was a Sunday Times newspaper hit right there. Just a soft thud and a base hit. But again, this is the big leagues. This is a 300 hitter, and if you hang a change up. They don't miss him very often. And again, we're talking a pretty special young hitter. He can't play defense like Nick Marcakis, but the batting average this year, very Marcakis like. Runner on at first base, and again, it's a leadoff man on. The leadoff man was on in the fifth. The only two times we've had the leadoff man on for either team in the ballgame. Scott Rowland on a check swing. Did he go? Nobody's asking. So he didn't. Ball one. This is a strong man holding up a swing right here. Ooh. Could have been that uh, 26th hit. He has flied out and popped out. 25 game hit streak, career high, batting 390 during the streak. That is the longest active streak in the majors right now. And as a result, he's moved his average up to third best. In the American League at 327. And the Orioles will get somebody up in the bullpen because kind of a critical time for a young pitcher because you have to get good hitters out the third time. And if you're going to take the next step, and we talked about pitching down, using your change up in your curveball, Matt Albert getting loose for the Orioles. The third time you have to make quality pitches. You can't be like the change up to Lynn belt high because they've seen all your stuff. They see the movement. They see how the slider breaks. They see how the curveball curls. They see how your change up moves. So make some good pitches. Down the line, right field, and headed foul. A two ball, two strike count. The 97 rookie of the year with Philadelphia. He's a five time All Star, seven gold gloves, and that's the career high streak that he brings into this series. Pretty nice streak. It's a major, major streak right there. Well, when you talk to Scott, he's, he says he's finally healthy. You know, that front shoulder had all kinds of surgical problems. He lays off that fastball. Almost thought about swinging on it. He actually had to change his swing. Scott today was saying, I had to adjust. I can't hold that bat way up like I used to because my shoulder won't allow it. So I had to drop my hands down. And I just had to get used to that and figure out where it was going to be comfortable for me. And you could see him choking up a little bit. Too many guys do that. 3-2, runner going. It's at the center. Jones is there, camped under. He's got it. One away here in the sixth. Space is sold out for Sunday at 2110 Utah Street, presented by First Fidelity Mortgage, but you're going to get another chance. There are going to be new dates added August 15, August 30, and September 5. Each day, just $21 gets you a reserved Utah Street bleacher seat and the exclusive I Live at 2110 Utah Street t shirt. 888 bird Orioles.com. Right between Jones and Marcakis. Right there. Here's running Wells. Wells has got a nine game hit streak. He has popped out and flied out as well. He too getting big during the streak, 385. Well, his legs are healthy. Hamstring problems last year. 13 out of 14 stealing bases. This again is going to be Jones. Two down. So a nice job by Jason Burkett. Lead off hit. Nobody's advanced. And the good news about Adam Lynn doesn't have a lot of speed, so he's pretty much stays right at first base. 
six putouts in center field for Jones so far in the ball game, and, and if it had been seven, the game would be tied. Exactly, the one he wants most is the one he didn't get. Still a runner at first base, two down. Lyle Overbay. Well, it's easy to turn the wrong way on a ball to hit directly at you. you just. Yep, that's one of the yeah. jobs of learning to play center. Yeah, it really is. A strike taken. Some yeah. players in the corners have trouble if they move from right to left or the other way around, figuring out balls that cut away from them. You're right. They center fielders it. have trouble yeah. with the balls directly hit at them. Some players make the adjustment easily, and others really have to work at it. Overbay will take that one for a strike. Overbay got out of an 0 for that he was in. He came in with an 0 for 10 and picked up a single in the fifth inning after he'd walked in the second. Well, you come in three for 37 and you walked in single. You're having a real good night. I'm hot. Weeders, you saw him almost standing up giving the sign there. He wanted that pitch up high and out of the strike zone. That's right where he got it. One ball, two strike count. Lind over at first base. Being held by Aubrey Huff. One, two. Two and two. Dave Tremblay said of Birkin, delivery is the problem. He throws the curveball too hard. Tries to yank it too hard. Take it easy. Let up on it a little. You'll be all right. 2 2 delivery. Off speed will miss. 3 and 2. The two down Huff will move back. And there is that breaking ball you were talking about. But from 0 2 to 3 2, now he's going to be running. Not a lot of speed, but you certainly give him an opportunity to get a much bigger jump at first. Runner going, and he walked him. That is the second walk surrendered. Over Bay got the other one in the second. Well, there's a young battery trying to get him out with breaking balls. And by trying to do that, even though it's not been a pitch he's commanded as well as his fastball, and they're going to go to the bullpen. So he pitched himself right out of the game. I think the scoreboard had a lot to do with it. It's not the pitch count. Rick Kranitz handling the pitchers, the pitching coach, going out to make the change. So, Birkin out of there, responsible for the two on. Blue Jays have a 2 0 lead. And Matt Albers is out of the bullpen. Yeah, pitched a couple of times, and you can see the numbers. And of course, early on, really struggled. He has come back and pitched very, very well. And he has allowed an earned run in, in only two of his last 14 appearances. And I'll tell you so sinker, curveball, changeup pitcher. 
And I think right now you got a high ball hitter at the plate and if Matt Albers does his job he will try to stay down in the strike zone. And I'm sure that's what Rick Kranitz and the Orioles are thinking about. So Albers is on big runs. Potential runs out there with Lind on at second over Bay at first. Rios has already delivered two doubles in the game. And he takes the slider for a strike. Two doubles and a run scored for Alex Rios. And a big out for Albers to get right here and keep that score at just two zip. 0 1 delivery by Matt. Hit hard to third. Melvin Moore, nice short hop. Force out at second base. No runs, one hit, no errors, and two are left on. Jays have the two to nothing lead. We're starting to see some player trades out there. Two big ones today as we see the Mets have traded Ryan Church to Atlanta for Jeff Francoeur. And also, Yoneski Betancourt is traded from Seattle to Kansas City for two minor league pitchers. Gary? That's interesting, Amber. Uh, Braves obviously deciding the time to cut the ties with Francoeur, who they had the great hopes for, had finally come. That is fouled back by Aubrey Huff. And Betancourt was one of the highly touted young players of the game when he first came up ties are cut there as well. Yeah well he can play shortstop with the best of them but apparently not well we saw he, he's on the disabled list just coming off or ready to come off so he wasn't having a good year with Seattle. Ivory Huff drills at the second right at him Hill. Huff retired 0 for 3 in the ball game. So you have seen in this game the importance of the scouting reports again. There have been an at least four or five occasions in the game where hard hit balls have been right at a position player who's been moved a bit. Look where he's playing here, playing him to pull way over, right at him. Those are another group of things that get done right in the game. And contrary to what you may think at home, you, you can't look at the defense, well, unless you're Tony Gwynn or Carew or somebody like that. And Sean Camp getting loose for the Blue Jays. And again, Fred Cecil's been outstanding. I mean, he's, when he struggled, he's made good pitches, to, and he's done it with all his pitches. I mean, right there, 1-0 changeup. So for a young pitcher that just turned 23, that had an ERA of over six runs a game, he has pitched a very, very good game. Ryan Mold has struck out and grounded out. 1-1 delivery, and that will be taken down low for a ball. Two ball, one strike count on Rymold. Will be followed by Luke Scott. Orioles trying to keep a two-game win streak to three and improve on their three and three season mark against the Jays. And remember, neither team is one on the road against their each other. Check swing foul ball. They have swept each other. Home runs through 50 games for rookies. Nolan Reimold's nine tied with Kurt Balfrey and Jim Traber with 11 the all time leader Jay Gibbons Cheeto Martinez and then Kirk Leffert, yeah. Reimold yeah Balfrey with nine along with Reimold and he was rookie of the year back in 65 pronounced pull hitter 
Right center to the line. Nolan leading most of the first half of the season among rookie offensive members. And he beat it. Oh, oh come on. on. He Whoa. is called out, but well, I don't know about that. Mike DeMuro making a call where it looked like yeah. he had crossed the bag yeah. and <laughs> And you need that call and get the assistant game. manager thrown out here. <laughs> well, what's rolling? He takes his time and then a rocket throw. But he beats it. Cross the bag. Yep, no doubt about it. Big call. Dave Joss is the acting manager with Dave Tremblay suspended. I mean, very close. Well, the tie goes to the runner. He foot is down, ball not quite in the glove. Was it close? Yes. Umpire got it wrong. It looks like he had that heel on the bag. Yeah. Well, we could go three deep in managers if we have one more call like that. <laughs> Here's Luke Scott. And Luke will take the pitch for a strike. Scott has had two singles. Luke now has a 10 game hit streak. Upping his average to 310. Well, he came in 22 for 66 against left hand pitching. And that's after hitting 215 last year. He's got seven home runs, seven of the 17 home runs against left handed. 17 home runs leading the Orioles. A career high seven RBI game on Tuesday at Seattle after promising the skipper that. He was going to deliver a long ball and some RBIs for him. And did he ever? 0 oh, 2 delivery on the way. Breaking ball, check swing, and it'll stay at two strikes. For Brett Cecil, as far as innings pitched early on in his first few starts, he was going about seven innings average. Then that unloading against Boston Miners for a month. Since coming back, he worked seven against Washington, three against Cincinnati, and three and two thirds against New York. And he had one relief appearance. 0 oh, 2 delivery on the way. Swung on a miss, but he's going a heck of a lot deeper in this one. He retires the side in order. We've completed six. The Toronto Blue Jays leading it 2 to nothing. Hungry families, so gather up the kids or anyone with an appetite for fun and check out the Left Field Club picnic perch. Go to Orioles.com. Gary? Thank you, Amber. And we go to the seventh inning. 2 5 and 0 oh for the Jays, 0 oh, 4 and 0 oh for the Orioles. Matt Elvers on in relief getting the final out in the sixth inning. Delucci, Chavez, and Scudero. 8 9 and 1 in the order for the Jays. Delucci and RBI in a ground ball out. 0 for 15. And the breaking ball will miss outside for a ball. One ball, one strike count. 
Another game here tomorrow night and Sunday afternoon to wrap up the pre All Star schedule. Here's the 1 1 delivery Delucci a ground ball. Roberts. One down. On Tuesday, July 28th, Orioles Reach will be supporting the Maryland Food Bank, and you can find out just what your favorite O's cook. It'll be the Orioles cook-off, as Brian Roberts, Jeremy Guthrie, and Greg Zahn will be at the ESPN Zone from 11.30 until 1, competing in the first-ever cooking competition. More info at 410-685-3776. That's going to be on July 28th, or you can go to ESPNZone.com. Third base, Melvin Moore. Off the bat of Chavez. Two down. Yeah, Raul Chavez done a terrific job. Not only the double, but he has steered his rookie pitcher through at least six shutout innings. And that pretty impressive considering the numbers coming in. Brett Cecil's finest outing by far, and he is out of the ball game as he was congratulated by the acting manager, Brian Butterfield. Brad Armsburg, the pitching coach between innings. It's the best game he's had. I and mean, that's good news for the Orioles. I mean, the way I look at it, you can take somebody out that pitched as well as he did. He deserves uh, what he got, which is six shutout innings, made some great pitches, but you, you got to, you can't figure the guy coming in is going to be any better. If he is, it's going to be a negative number. Yes, it is. Marco Scudero. 0 for 3 in the ball game. The man after whom the great pool game was named for kids in the swimming pool all summer. One Marco, ball went. Marco Polo. Oh. Oh, yeah. It's close, though. <laughs> Maybe some of your friends. It's the Greek version. And the pitch is taken down low and a two ball, one strike count. You've been off too long. I'm telling you. <laughs> I said I had a good week. So uh, five days or four days, whatever four days. it was. Two and one. <laughs> and that is a base hit. So Scudero is on the leadoff batter for the Jays. He gets a two out single here in the seventh inning. Well, again, I mean, incredible year. A lot of doubles came in with 25 doubles. He's now reached base, what, 156 times. So again, uh, one of those guys, I mean, awfully, awfully good. That's, that leaves the American League. And what he does, he looked down because of the count and got one down and just hit it past Melvin Moore, who made a great effort. Now a two out effort with Scooter on and Hill up. Hill trying to extend a three game hit streak has popped out struck out and popped out again. He is fifth in the league in home runs with the 20 that you see right there. And again the throw over. Yeah I think you have to he doesn't steal that much seven out of 11 but you have to make him stop and he was getting one of those creeping leads. I wouldn't be surprised. Again with a two nothing lead if they would send him. Even though Hill certainly with one swing can put. So again another creeping lead. It's the strike in there. 0 and 1. Well the concussion last year and. He can flat out Hill hit anything up. High breaking ball high fastballs. One of the better high ball hitters in the American League. And right center on. Over. Slider will miss away. He is sixth in RBI, second in hits, second in multi hit ball games. His 20 home runs, only three behind the league leader starting the day. Carlos Pena of Tampa Bay. Mark Teixeira is second with 21, tied with Morneau and Russell Brennan. One ball, one strike out. And again, the throw over. Two nothing ball game, so Albers trying to make sure Scooter out gets no lead here, no chance to take off. One one delivery on the way, and that'll be fouled off. One and two.
Two down, one two delivery. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. Mike DeMuro making the call. Elvers gets the strikeout. One left on. Seventh inning stretch time. Brought to you by Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey. Please drink. Response. For the Jays, 0-4-0 for the Orioles. Gary Thon, Jim Palmer, and Amber Theo Harris here with you. And uh, we weren't expecting this kind of ball game. You get two young pitchers trying to preserve a role in each of their rotations. Six plus ERA, and it's a pitcher's duel. I think. I, mean, I think the managers would have liked to have them, you know, put their names, at, you know, as a not the not the DH, but the you know the, the ninth or tenth guy, and say, hey, we want them to pitch. Better than their years, and that's really what's happened. Uh, you know, Birkin pitched very well. He got out pitched by Brett Cecil, but again, the defense let him down a little bit. We talk about Jason Birkin, but the Orioles at home, they usually pitch better than they do in the road. They hit better. Tonight, they pitch better than they pretty much pitched here all year long, but they haven't been able to score any runs, at, at least at this point. Well, this is the way the Orioles have been winning ball games. Wait till late in the game, be behind by a couple of runs, and then come back and win them. That's what they did against Seattle, and that's what they're going to try and do here. They really don't have a choice. They get nine more outs. The, the Jays are going to be making a pitching change, and uh, let's let's see if the Orioles can take advantage of that. So the Orioles will get a chance at the bullpen as Camp, Sean Camp, will appear in his 30th game here with that 0-4 mark and a 3-7-9 ERA. So the O's, as Jim said, probably more than happy to see Brett Cecil out of there, the starter, and get a shot at Camp. Cecil, outstanding job going the six innings. He gave up just four hits. No runs, one walk, and he had five strikeouts in the ball game. And Melvin Mora will come on to hit against Camp. And that is in there for a strike. One of the problems for the Orioles trying to develop any offense in the ball game is that they have not had a leadoff man on in the six innings that were worked by Brett Cecil. But that does allow you, if you do get in trouble with one pitch or so, get out of the inning, and that's what Brett was able to do. Cam's delivery to Mora is swung out and missed a slider that he got down in the strike zone. Alvin Mora hitting at 260. A couple of home runs. Both of his home runs have been hit here at Camden Yards. Mora two for eight. A lifetime off Cam. The Orioles get a look at a right-hander here out of the pen after the young left-hander went six. 0 2 delivery to him. Came inside, fouled it off. Count will stay at two strikes. We're in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Orioles coming home from Seattle with a comeback win. Jesse Carlson, first time up in the pen for Carlson. Yeah, so they're getting uh, the matchup guys up. Camp, who actually gets lefties out better than righties. And again, I think one of the reasons is he's got a terrific changeup. We've already seen that to Melvin Moore. Orioles get a guy on. Time run comes to the plate. 0 oh, 2 count on him. Mora fought that one off, and it will end up in the seats and stay at two strikes. Well, the team that has made the least amount of errors in the American League is the Toronto Blue Jays. Came in with 31. And the Orioles started the game with 54. So they have a seven time gold lover at third. As you mentioned, Scooter Playing very well as short. Over Bay, very good at first, and then Hill, the all star, up the middle. And then Rios and the center fielder, Vernon Wells. Wells with three gold gloves. 
So hit it to left. And the third, a fair ball. And the Orioles will get the leadoff man on. Scott Rowland tried to short hop on the backhand and couldn't get it. That's the only way he can play this ball. You can see him off the line, and by knocking it down, at least he saves him an extra base. Because if that ball gets by him, and again, the, the short hop, no easy way to play that ball. Should be a base hit. Malvin Mora will be credited with a single, the fifth hit for the Orioles, their first leadoff man on. Now we'll see, as Jim said, how big a play that was by Roland to knock it down. Matt Wieters, he has drawn a walk and struck out. Wieters right to third, and Roland no play at first. And again, the defensive positioning. Roland moved way over to a shortstop, right where he needed to be. And then what happens if you want to execute, and you can see the defense, they just, the scouts say, hey, doesn't hit that ball down the line. Now, if you're not over that hole, that's a base hit to left. And you have to give Camp some credit because he threw a fastball down and away. So why Matt Meters had a very nice approach, he didn't quite hit it as hard as he normally would if the ball had been in the middle of the plate. Now is it'll be as Torres, and it'll move Roland in at third base. Runner at first and one down. And he does show bunt, takes it down low. If he bunts here, obviously, he's bunting to try and get a base hit. Jim Johnson and the Orioles bullpen. Thirty thousand five hundred and seventy four the announced attendance on this gorgeous Friday night here at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Here's the 1-0 delivery. Took something off that and missed as Torres takes it. And the count goes to 2 and 0 from camp. Well, you can see sinkers change ups. I would imagine, even though this door is a singles hitter, that this certainly could well be a changeup. But Caesar can look for pretty much a fastball over the middle of the plate and try to hit it up the gap. It's Torres getting back off the DL today. And while they, he had the rehab, it's nothing like playing here. No. You got to readjust. Six at bats in a month. That's that's all he got coming back, and they play him very shallow. Roland still in at third, and that misses. And boy, Camp, this is a guy you got to get out if you're in Camp's position, and the count goes to 3 and 0. Oh. Well, we will see how Brian Butterfield, who is the interim manager for Cito Gaston, will try to match up if Caesars be able to get on. Down the order, Brian Roberts will get that chance. So he walks the number nine batter. Oriole fans, when it comes to tickets you deserve Major League Service, go to StubHub, official fan to fan ticket marketplace of the Orioles. There's the lineup Toronto here at seven, and then Sunday at 1 30. And then the All Star break, and the Orioles will not resume until the Friday after the break as they'll take on Chicago on uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Brian Butterfield making his way out. He's going to make the change. Uh, he's going to go to the bullpen, get the matchup that he wants here. Brian Roberts coming up. Two down, a uh, one down, two on.
And again, uh, last year, 69 games. Uh, he was terrific, signed as a minor league free agent uh, this year. Again, this will be his 43rd appearance, and he has uh, been able to come up with five holds, in other words, a setup in. Last year, the numbers a lot better, and the left handers hitting almost 100 points higher. Last year, they were a little bit over 170, the same with the, the right handers. So, lefty's hitting 271, and Brian Butterfield saying, you know what, I think I want Brian Roberts with only one of his eight home runs right handed, hitting from the right side. Well, Carlson will face him batting right handed. And there are the two base runners. I suppose for Brian, it sets up the possibility of. If the near the Jays have maybe rolling into a double play much more from this side of the of the plate. He is one for six lifetime off Carlson. Two on one out. The Orioles trying to stay away from the double play. Roberts will take the pitch up high for a ball. Here's the Orioles chance to get right back in this trailing two nothing. Brian has grounded into three double plays this season. Two of them batting right handed. 0 for 3 in the ball game. 1 0 delivered to him. And that will miss. And Carlson's behind 2 0. Carlson worked against Tampa Bay on the 8th. He worked an inning, giving up a walk and a hit, and had one strikeout. Yeah, look at those numbers for Brian when he gets ahead of the pitcher. 316 with a home run. Two a deliver, and that'll be looped in the air to right field. Mora will tag. Rios has it. Mora's going to go to third. Throw will come into second base. So Roberts a fly ball out, and there are two down. So, as baseball often does, the stage is set for a little retribution. Adam Jones earlier had a chance to catch a ball in center field that he couldn't get off the bat of Alex Rios. It went for a double and set up the two runs that scored in the fifth. Now he comes up with two down and runners on at first and third base. Camp on the other hand. Looking to hold the Orioles at zero. Jones will take the pitch, maybe a little low for a ball. And that will bring Chavez out to the mound. Yeah, and that pitch has been called a strike a lot tonight. So the Orioles get a little bit of a break. Chavez comes right out. Gary Mills uh, not giving Jesse Jara Carlson the low pitch on a couple of occasions. I'm not saying it was a strike, I'm just saying it's been called tonight. And you can see just Maybe the bottom of the strike zone, or maybe just a share shade low. 1 0 count. Adam pops it up. First base. Is there room? Yes. And the play made by Overbay. No runs, one hit, no errors, and two are left on base. Seven complete. The Jays up two to nothing.
Power Center Harbor for Brian's Baseball Bash. It is a star-studded event benefiting the University of Maryland's Hospital for Children. Brian and several teammates will be there to sign autographs, interact with fans. It helps to raise money for patients and families. To order your tickets, 410-328-6064. Matt Albers working out of the bullpen for the Orioles has given up a single over an inning and a third. Lind has picked up a single in three times up and now has a six game hit streak going. And we'll chop that one foul. And a two strike count. The Orioles have continued to have their chances in the ball game. They've left eight on now. And four of those have been in scoring position. So it's not been the opportunity. It's been the big hit that hasn't been there. Adam Lind stays at two strikes. And I just remember the number from the road trip, but at home, of course, they come in and leading the, just talking about the Orioles, they leading the American League in runners in scoring position at 302, but at home it was something like 348. And then that 299 batting average coming in. Not tonight, though. Not tonight. As of yet. Yep. Here's the 0 2 delivery on the way. That one down to first. Aubrey Huff. And they almost handcuffed him. Albers gets over. Lind is retired. One away here in the eighth inning. Time to text in your vote for the AT&T player of the game. Area choices. Scott's had a two for three. Couple of singles. Rios has had a two for three with two doubles and a run scored. And the starter, Brett Cecil, no runs, four hits, over six. Text in your vote, A, B, or C to 518-6-2. One down, nobody on. Scott Rowland, 0 for three in the game. And trying to extend that 25-game hitting streak. And he will take a strike on the outside corner. And no interest in trying to hit that curveball. That's how good it was. He's got the fourth longest streak in Blue Jays history. Sean Green, 28 games and 99 is the longest for the Jays. Take it outside. And a one ball, one strike count on Roland. Matt Albers against Roland, or vice versa. Roland's 0 for 3. Well, you talked about the 192 doubles this team had. That one bloop, second base, Brian Roberts. But it seems like almost all these guys have 25 to, to 26 doubles. And Roland and Scudero and Hill, of course, he hits home runs. He only has 15 doubles. Wells has a lot of doubles. And without those, they don't score tonight. Fifth inning, leadoff yep. single, double Rios, RBI double Chavez. The other RBI and a ground ball out by David DeLucci. Here's Vernon Wells. Wells with a nine game streak. He hasn't extended as he is 0 for 3 in the ball game. Well, Matt Albers has come on, and I mean, this is the way he pitched before he hurt the labor. Getting his curveball over, sinking the ball. Even the uh, base hit last inning. But a scooter roll was a sinker and it was a ground ball hit. Well, so we'll take a strike. Didn't like to call. Well, see, I mean, I, that's the pitch I talked about. Jesse Carlson didn't get. And right here, this is a grounder. And again, it's borderline. And there have been a couple on Vernon. And he wants to have a 10 game hitting streak. Even though he might like to play golf, he just wants to do it in the offseason. Here's the 0-2 delivery to him, and that is scooped up outside. Wells has been a very solid hitter in this ballpark here at Camden Yards. A lifetime 299 average, 11 home runs here in this ballpark. He's had over 244 at bats here. One, two count, two down, bases empty. Wells way inside. Count goes to two and two. Chicago Cubs lost another ball game today as the St. Louis Cardinals beat them. And Giovanni Soto, their all-star catcher last year, has had a disastrous year this year. He's gone on the DL. Another oblique problem. As uh, Cardinals beat the Cubs 8-3 to today. 2-2 Two -two delivery on the way, and it's outside. He stayed off at 3-2. and Cardinals do have a formula. It's amazing how they continue to win baseball games. They are again leading their division. 
forty eight wins. They've got a four and a half game lead over the Cubs who are in third place. Milwaukee's passed them for number two in that division. Chopped it. Fair. Weeders up. Better. And that'll do it. They're in the eighth of one, two, three inning. Oriole Bats now trying to come back from a two nothing deficit. Follow the O's, get behind the scenes information. All the Birdland news you need, just one away. Bottom half of the eighth inning coming up. The Orioles have done well of late in getting back in ball games where they have trailed. Trailing after eight innings, the Orioles are now three and 43. Trailing after seven, five and 43. Nick Marquecas. Will lead it off. Marquecas, Huff, and Reimold. And the pitch is inside. Jesse Carlson out of the bullpen has worked to just two hitters in the seventh inning. Well, guy on. Somebody hit one. Guy on. Somebody hit a double. Right back in the game. Down to first base. Had he played along the line over Bay, will take it there himself. Marquecas, one for four, one away in the eighth inning. And Carlson makes an awfully good pitch. Marquez usually doesn't swings that balls up and in, and and hitters counts, but he gets him to, to hit a ground ball. Yeah, Carlson, a minor league guy, came in his first appearance for the Blue Jays. If we look at Cam Cam uh, Michalio, who we saw up in Seattle for the first time, threw the ball very well. But Carlson comes in with the bases loaded, nobody out, 11th inning last April, strikes out the side, and the rest is history. Had a great year and never pitched in the big leagues before. Aubrey Huff facing a guy who ends up in his follow through on the grass on the first base side. Well, you know, part of that is deception. I mean, he jumps at you. It's about as far as you can get in the landing zone. Aubrey Huff 0 for 3 is lined out, popped out, struck out, and will tap that one foul and a one ball, two strike count on Huff. Brett Cecil, no runs, four hits over six. Camp worked a third of an inning, a hit and a walk. Now Carlson on. Orioles. Jason Birkin, two runs, five hits over five and two thirds. Two walks and a strikeout. Matt Elber's on. It has been all about the pitching. So far in this game. One two delivery on the way. High, maybe a little inside as well. Two and two on Huff. So again, a lot of action, a lot of deception. 89 to 90. And a little jump. Just in case they hit it back up. And that's going to be way inside. And a three ball, two strike count. 
Left handers 271 right handers 277 off Carlson. I don't think anybody's going to ever accuse him of not getting through his delivery. Piece, no. Right? Nope. That follow through is pretty complete. 3 2 delivery. Ivory rips it. Foul. Orioles trying to get the potential tying run to the plate here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. And you would think, and it might happen anyway, that if Huff gets on, then Jason Fraser will come out of the bullpen, who's been pitching very well. Blue Jays bullpen, eighth in ERA compared to 12 for the Orioles pen. 3 2, popped it up left field. Delucci. Two down in the eighth. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Brian Butterfield on his way out got to give a love to my homie. He is a Maine native. His dad was the head coach at the University of Maine and really put the program together at Maine and uh, the Butterfield family well known throughout the Pine Tree State. He's getting a chance to manage. There is Brian, the bench coach for Aceto Gaston, who is off for the next two games. So, bullpen matchup time as Reimold will be coming up, two down, nobody on here. There is Jason Fraser last outing against Tampa Bay not a good one he took the loss in an inning and two thirds giving up a, a run and a hit with a couple of walks even though he struck the side out. Yeah he's got pretty good numbers I mean look at him right there doesn't walk a whole lot of guys almost a strikeout per inning which is usually the case. Thirty one year older out of uh, Chicago lives in Lake Forest now and I could hope for us so the Orioles. Still trying to get back in the game. You have to do it against Frazier with two outs here in the eighth. Nolan Reimold has faced Frazier only once, 0 for 1 against him. He has grounded out twice and struck out in the ball game. The Orioles have four singles, two by Luke Scott, one by Mora, and one by Jones. That has been uh, about it here in the ball game tonight. It's been all about the singles. And the pitch is taken up high for a ball. And Fraser working here as the Orioles try and get him on for Luke Scott in the on deck circle. That's who you want up. Down 2 nothing with a runner on base. Reimold hitting a 259, and he will take that in there for a strike. Nolan continues to lead the rookies in almost all of the offensive categories, even though. As we mentioned earlier, the month of July has been a very tough one for him. He's got the second lowest batting average in the league in July so far. 1 1 delivery. And Reimold will take that down low. Yep, shows patience. 2 and 1. Well, Fraser, you know, low 90s. You saw the split figure fastball. And 
He pitched against the Orioles early on, very effective with that. Because it looks like a fastball and he just dives when you throw it properly. And again, this is a anytime you're only down by two runs, this is a critical count right here. Try to get a good pitch to it, make sure it's a strike. And it is. And he got the fly ball to right field. Rios. And a one, two, three inning here in the eighth. Eighth complete at Camden Yards, and the Jays up to nothing. Book your next trip at southwest.com. Gary Thorne, Jim Palmer, Amber Theo Harris. Gorgeous night here in Baltimore. Great to have you on board. A 2 0 lead for the Jays in the first to three. And Cam McAleo will come out of the bullpen. Yeah, he actually pitched very well down at Triple A Norfolk. We saw him at the end of last year. He stood on the third base side of the pitching rubber and would step almost into the middle of the right handed hitter's batter's box, so they moved him. I asked him, I said, how did that happen? He said, Rick Kranitz and Dave Schmidt, the, the roving instructor, Kranitz, the major league pitching coach. So they moved him over, and he was up as high as 98 in Seattle. So, again, an important inning right here because you want to keep the Orioles within two. Kalia will be facing the Jays for the first time this year. Lyle Overbay, Rios and DeLucci against him. Overbay has a single, a walk, and another walk. The two walks surrendered by the starter, Jason Burke, and both went to Overbay, hitting a 252. One inning, two runs, three hits, fifth inning. Delucci on a ground ball out, Raul Chavez on an RBI double, scoring Overbay a single, and Rios who had doubled. That's the inning of runs here in this ball game. Otherwise, the pitchers have gotten the job done. The Orioles best chance second inning but it was a two down effort with the bases loaded. And it'll be taken inside for a ball and they left two on again in the seventh inning and they got two on and one away. Two ball one strike count on Overbay. So Cam who hails from Montana lives in Bozeman right now. Brian Roberts. I mean, this is a great opportunity for him. And again, you know, last year, mechanically, no way of being successful over on that side of the rubber. So that moving the 24 inches to the other side really gives him, because he does throw across his body, a much better chance of throwing strikes. And coming into this season, it only had, had 144 innings in the minor leagues. So not a lot of innings to find out what you do well and what you don't, what you need to work on. Rios. A crossfire action on the inside corner for a strike. And across your body is when you you, you throw at an angle. I mean, it's almost like you step to your right if you're right-handed. And you can see that right there. So he's stepping right at Alex Rios. If you drew a straight line from that right foot, he's going to be see almost all the way across. So that's almost 24 inches across his body. Hit hard to short is Torres. 
two down. And let's check in on how you're doing on the AT&T voting for the player of the game. Right now Luke Scott on top. Rios and Cecil the starter. You can still text in your vote to A, B, or C. 51862. Final results on O's Extra. Two down bases empty. David DeLucci. Ground ball second base. Brian Roberts. <laughs> Orioles have three outs. To get two runs to keep this game going or three to win it. Mind over the ninth when we come back. Seven appearances, eight straight games without allowing a run. How does he get lefties out? 241. Righties even more difficult to, to solve downs. They're hitting 189. So terrific numbers. Orioles need a runner as they make some defensive changes. Jose Batista was a rule five guy for the Orioles many, many moons ago. He'll go into left field. Well, the Orioles bottom in the ninth inning against Downs, who has had eight. Saves and nine chances. Last outing came on the eighth against Tampa Bay, gave up one hit, no part of an inning pitched. Big story, of course, in Toronto that BJ Ryan was going to was released 15 million owed to him by the Jays. Yeah, they tried everything to create some arm speed for him, and you know, eventually the word was they weren't going to do it till the offseason, but just no way to really use him. But they know how to use Scott Downs. They bring him in to try to save this two nothing ball game. Brett, Luke Scott. Yeah. Brett Cecil certainly attentively watching. Scott is 0 for 4 against Downs. Scott Mora and Weeders. Scott at 308 will take the first pitch up high for a ball. Obviously getting the leadoff man on here in the inning enormously important. For the Orioles to try and get something going. That has been a tough hoe tonight getting somebody on that leadoff man on base. They did it with Mora. We got a single in the seventh inning. And they got two on with one away, but that's as far as that inning went. And that is the only time that's happened. Toronto has six shutouts to their credit. The Orioles have been shut out five times. One ball, one strike count. Chance to win the ball game for Brett Cecil, their 23 year old lefty starter. He's trying to get his third against one loss. Orioles, Jason Birkin, the starter. The pitcher of record, two runs, five hits. Could be one and six if the Orioles do not come back. Well, it would be a very, very tough loss for him and the ball club. Birkin pitched well, certainly well enough to win with any kind of run support, but again, he's only gotten 2.9 all year long, and that number will go down after tonight. 
There's a big breaking ball. Also, it's got a changeup. So Scott Downs not over powering 89. Maybe he will touch 90, 91 on occasion. But he does change speeds and again, kind of a herky jerky. Just a lot of stuff going on. Tough to follow. Yeah. Rhythm wise. And he starts a lot like George Sherrill closed. But you don't pick up the ball that well. Scott with a one ball, two strike count. Outfield straight away. One two delivery and a breaking ball outside. Straight game of baseball does it again to you. You get two young pitches. The IRA is over six come in. Two teams with outstanding offenses who can generate a lot of runs, and the Jays had been doing that. And the Orioles did that on the road in the last two games. And here you are in a two nothing ball game. Two two delivery to Scott. Breaking ball got him. Yeah, perfect breaking ball two two. I don't think Luke thought it. But again, showed him a couple, and then and that's where he caught it. But where it goes in reference to the plate, and apparently Jerry Meals thought it was high enough. Melvin Mora, he has faced downs a lot. Four for 17 with one home run. Mora has had a single, a walk, and he has grounded out. One of the Orioles' five hits in the ballgame. And Melvin will take the fastball down low, ball one. Downs doesn't walk many, so you don't expect to go up there and get an opportunity to get a free pass against him. Yeah, that's the last thing he wants to do with a 2 0 lead is issue a free pass. Melvin taking right there. Only five walks surrendered in the 27 innings work coming in as opposed to 28 strikeouts. Downs 1 and 1. The delivery to Mora. And that's fouled off the handle back and a one ball, two strike count on Melvin. So a little movement. 91. There's your 91 on the on the radar gun. And again, deceptive. So 89 to 91, the big sweep and curve ball hasn't thrown a change up yet. But can you command the ball? If you can do it at 89 and 91, add a little bit, take a little bit off. And you're deceptive, which he is. And we'll get some people out. Pitches very confidently in the way he approaches. Yeah, it just looks like he knows out. what he's doing. Yeah. One, two delivery and came back inside on him. Yeah, the guys with good numbers, and I don't know if we get around to him. Brian Roberts hits him well. He's seven for 18. Greg Zahn, four for seven. And he caught him last year. Marcakis, five for 14, 357. He's done a nice job against Scott Down. Got to get there, though. Yeah, you're not going to be getting to those hitters unless you. Game should be Ooh, over. Breaking yeah. ball got him, and he gets another strikeout. Two K's in the bottom of the ninth inning. And I think one of the reasons Scott Downs had such good feel is that he was a starting pitcher earlier on in his career. We saw Mike Flanagan do this. He never closed, but he was one of the better setup guys because, again, towards the end of his career, he just understood how to pitch. He could add a little bit, take a little bit off the breaking ball. And right there, both of the strikeouts here in the ninth on his curveball or slur, whatever you want to call it. So two down, Matt Wieters will try and keep it alive. Drew a walk his last time up. These two teams have played some very tight ball games. Orioles have outscored Toronto 34 to 32 in the seven games they have played. Salazar is waiting in the on deck circle to hit for his tourists if Wieters can get on base. Downs with a 1 0. Weeders will foul that one away. And the count is evened up at 1 and 1. Brian Butterfield over there. Cito Gaston away for two games. The wins and losses, however. In these situations, including Dave Tremblay sitting out on the suspension, go to the true manager. A two ball, one strike count.
meaning Gaston and Tremblay will get the WRL in this ball game. Two ball, one strike count on Weeders. Set up down low, Chavez. That one right back to the mound. Downs has got it. And this one is in the books. And a 2 nothing win as the Orioles are shut out by the Jays. Brett Cecil gets the win to go three and one. Jason Bergens will take the loss one and two.